Hello to all of my siblings at the Memorial Church. My name's Elizabeth. I am a junior at Harvard and I've had the great privilege of worshiping at the Memorial Church for all of my time at the university. Um, I'm very excited to be with you tonight to share a spiritual practice that I have found really meaningful and centering over the last few months and that is the practice of guided meditation. I have done a lot of work on Harvard's campus in interfaith communities and as such have had the great privilege of learning from and letting the traditions of other practices inform my own practice. Um, and one area that has been really meaningful to me as I seek to integrate it into Christian practice is the tradition of Buddhist meditation. Um, while of course meditation is part of Christian practice in many ways, it's often only associated with the monastic tradition, with the contemplative tradition, and many Buddhist um, practices are centered in very codified and very deliberate um, and often very ancient forms of meditation that have specific purposes and uh, specific steps to follow. Um, so I found it really helpful to learn from these as I work to create my own meditation practice. I have two books that have been very useful for me. One is this wonderful book called Guided Buddhist Meditations, Essential Practices on the Stages of the Path by Tubtun Chodron, who is a Buddhist nun who uh, runs a monastery, I believe in Washington State. And this is more of um, kind of a manual, I would say, that outlines the do's, the don'ts, and, and the purposes behind different types of meditation, um, specifically related to Buddhist practice, but I think very easily integrated into Christian practice. Um, she does a wonderful job of explaining why certain things exist, why you might choose this certain path, and also gives a longer sequence of guided meditations um, from the Buddhist tradition. And the other book that has been really important for me in this is The Mirror Mind, Zen Christian Dialogue by William Johnston, which is a more abstract book about the possibilities for interconnection and interfaith exchange in Zen Buddhism and Christianity. And um, Johnston focuses on a number of different areas. Um, he's got more general theological, philosophical um, passages on uh, the role of scripture in both religions, on the breath, on the body. And um, I found him helpful and interesting as a resource more for examining the exact dynamics between Zen Buddhism and Christianity as they can be put into practice, um, which I do in a practical sense with Tube 10 Chidron's book. Um, so what does meditation practice look like for me and what could it look like for you? Um, I have been meditating every day now, I would say, for about four months and I have found it so wonderfully helpful <laughs> and centering in a way that is really valuable when in quarantine time seems to have no meaning and thoughts come and go as they will. Meditation, I think, is not about emptying your mind um, or emptying yourself or becoming the void, at least in this aspect of practice. Um, and in this specific use, I think, is more about teaching yourself to think clearly um, on what you want to be thinking about. So not thinking about nothing, but thinking really, really well. And for me, that has looked like sitting down um, on a cushion at the end of my bed, which I'm not going to show to you because it's covered in laundry. Um, but sitting there, I think you could take any position you want, really. Um, the one time I tried it lying down, I fell asleep, so maybe not that. Um, sitting, first beginning by thinking about your body and your breath, checking in with your joints, your lungs, your stomach, um, relaxing all the muscles from the top of your head downward. And that could take anywhere from just a few seconds of, of checking in to if you want a really deliberate sequence of breaths, um, 
the Buddhist practice I've been reading recommends maybe just 21 deep in and out breaths um, to clear yourself. Or you could just sit and breathe until you feel like um, all of the day's debris has washed away down the river. And then it can be useful to take another few minutes to do another clearing exercise. A practice I've really enjoyed has been trying to go through my entire day mentally in my head from the moment I got up until the moment I find myself on, on the, the cushion, thinking of where I might have said something, done something, or thought something that is contrary to what I would like to be, um, whether it be a harsh word, an unkind thought about someone, impatience, a lack of perspective, um, inattentiveness to myself or to others, and just thinking about without out guilt or shame, just thinking about what I didn't appreciate about the action I took and what I might do in the future. So that's something I've um, enjoyed as, as a moment of <laughs> fixing time um, for one thing, it's nice to look back on a day and remember that the day did in fact happen, even though it's very, very similar in most ways to the days before it and the days after. Um, so something like that you might do after breathing. And then for the bulk of the meditative practice, this Buddhist guided meditations book that I've been using obviously has some longer sequences of Buddhist specific meditation. Um, which I haven't been following um, because I, I don't practice Buddhism in that way. But the general approach and the methodology that I think they take is to, you know, move in sequence through ideas that flow naturally in and out of one another. So maybe for Christian practice, it could be something like um, spending a month going through one of the gospels and picking out a passage every night that speaks to you and, and meditating on it. And meditating on something doesn't mean, or doesn't have to mean just sitting there with it. It can be um, thinking analytically and really deeply about every single word and implication. So I have, for example, picked a Psalm and gone through it kind of word by word in, in a meditation at night, like breathing in and out with every single word, thinking about the implications of that word how it connects to the larger structure of the the verse that it's in, the psalm that it's in, and really, like um, William Johnson in this book I mentioned, The Mirror Mind, calls calls this body reading. So reading a text or, or scripture with your whole body and letting it suffuse into your um, your whole body as you as you engage with it. So that that's one thing you could. Um, Maybe sketch out for yourself 20 different things that you would like to um, meditate on. So give yourself a list of, for a month, maybe um, maybe for Lent, write down um, a month's worth of words that might seem to have similar meanings or conceptions. You could say, you know, grief anger, sadness, lost, and every night think about one of those words and what might distinguish it as its own unique, special, unspecial, meaningful um, reality and, and thinking about what the definition of that means to you and what it might mean to your practice. And yeah, after spending however much time you want to on this more analytical part of meditation, I've than anywhere from just five minutes of, of thinking on the Lord's Prayer to, to a longer extended sequence, thinking about a particular text that's been bouncing around the inside of my head. So after you've done that, then for as long or as little as you'd like, then just, um, yeah, do whatever feels right, I think, um, for the ending of it say a specific prayer, maybe something routine to close out the meditative practice. Maybe focus in on a specific thought that you've had that you'd like to take with you for the next um, week or month or rest of your spiritual life. Uh, write something down if something came to you that is really meaningful. 
and give yourself another few breaths to uh, thank your body for holding an unnatural position for a while. Maybe maybe stretch out some some sleepy limbs. And um, yeah, that's sort of the basic outline of what I've been doing and what I found really helpful and meaningful and centering as um, kind of a way of having a conversation with myself, really. I have missed having one-on-one -on -one and in-person conversations with other faith practitioners, and this has been a helpful way for me to have those conversations um, in a way that I didn't think I could, but that the structure of meditation allows me to have just with myself and with God. So I hope that this is a helpful practice for you, and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your evening.